this is important for the evolution of, of the system and, and, the, and the reason why the shape of, of the variants are not, not, not completely similar. Um, so what, what, have we, what have we done in terms of, of data collection? So we have a, a number of, of longer cores that, that penetrate through the Holocene succession. We have uh, a lot of dating of the dunes. We have a lot of uh, relatively of, of the GBR transect, so we can can follow uh, some of the some of the um, services that we have identified in uh, in our core and reconstruct the architecture of, of these um, of these barrier islands. So. So the, the thing I, I want to focus on here in this talk is a particular um, erosion surface that we have identified. First, I was not really aware of if it was important, but we could see from all our calls that we have taken along this barrier chain that we have a relative distinct erosion surface. As there's of course multiple erosion surfaces in, the, in these kind of calls. Um, and I didn't pay much attention to it in the beginning. But as the studies develop and more and more studies, uh, I, I worked more and more of the islands, I could see that that was, uh, was a pattern. So uh, I know this is a pretty busy figure, it's just to show that we have from north to south we have this erosion surface. I will zoom in uh, here on, on the barrier island of, of, of oil milk just to, to show it a bit more uh, detail. So this is a core thing here. This is really just a very short part of the core, so it's only 12 centimeters long. So just to show the erosion surface, this is in terms of a shore face deposits uh, that is cut by the, this erosion surface. We have a storm like here. So in the log, it looks like this. You can see here in the log, we have a pretty high density of oversell things. And that's actually very uh, one of the, yeah, to say the strongest data sets we have for this core that we have data that really, really density. So we have a, a high resolution chronology based on over data. So we also have an idea on how much time is actually lacking due to this erosion that, that we see. So this erosion surface that can be followed in our GBR section, this is a relatively long GBR section that, that crosses uh, oil bit more or less from, from the wave exposed part here to the west to the to the back barrier side in the east. And, and it's sitting continuous here on the, on, on the GPR section and you can follow it here uh, coming up here. And what you should notice here actually you have another surface coming here. So it's, it appears that this erosion surface continues towards the east, but actually what I think is that you have erosion from both sides of the island. So both from the wave exposed side, but also from, from the back back <coughs> side. And that is actually, we, we see that in, in also from, from the other uh, barrier islands, that it seems like this system has been eroding from both sides. So, um, so one thing is of course to, to, to get the, this particular right and understanding uh, kind of the, the positional um, evidence of such an erosion. So we start to think, okay, can we also see it in, in our uh, Ozella uh, or in our chronology? So in this 8 depth diagram with the AG on the X axis, the uh, elevation on the Y axis, uh, we have plotted all our cores along with uh, our relative uh, sea level curve. This is just one uh, of several sea level curves in this area uh, and this is a model curve uh, and I really like this kind of diagram because it gives me a really good idea of, of how the, the deposits the, the deposit at the depth of it in, in relation to the contemporary uh, sea level. So for example here we see from, from around 7,000 years ago to 5,000 years ago we have all of these barrier systems forming, uh, or at least they are forming at the location where we see them today. Um, they are coming up from a bed below sea level, five, six, seven meters below sea level, and you see you have a lot of HC flooding above the, the contemporary sea level, so it means it comes up to the building up above the sea level. You have a surplus of sediment, you have the formation of your barrier chain. 
approximately 3,500 years ago, something happened. We don't have almost any uh, ages from this, uh, from, this, from this period, from 3,500 to 2,000 years. Um, so there's simply a, a, a gap in, in our chronology. Uh, what we can also see is that the, the deposition of middle relative to, to the contemporary sea level is, is dropping. So now the few cores of the few ages we have is actually plotting below the sea level curve. Um, so, and as you probably guessed, this, this, this period here matches the, the erosion surface that we have identified in, in all the cores. So this erosion surface is what we interpret is is uh, erosion of the whole barrier chain where we, where we more or less, we don't, we don't lose it completely, but at least the elevation of the barrier chain becomes much lower than it was previously. And from around 2,000 years ago, step it again, it goes up with these or orange dots here that are old in June. So, so we have a fully established uh, like barrier chain in the Rolling. Deposit and topped by by Eolian deposits. So the next thing is, of course, to start wondering what, why, 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 why did this happen? What could have caused such an erosion? Why? Because we, we didn't we didn't see anything in uh, uh, we don't see anything in our sea level record that should indicate okay now we we have a, 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 a rise in sea level. So so we call our another door here north of the system up in this cosplay uh, foreland and yeah it basically looks like this we also have a lot of marine deposits it's beach ridges topped by older deposits and again a very dense chronology so so we have a good age constraint jumping back to this putting in our new ages boom they got more or less exactly in this gap that we identified in our from our uh, barrier chain uh, south of this cosmic system. So I think there is a connection here. There's a connection between the, 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 the southern barrier system and the cosmic uh, system to the north. And what I think happened is that we have a shift in the positional locus. So before, uh, from for example 7,000 years to, to this 3,500 years, the, the positional locus was, was down here. And, but as this system evolved, the longshore drift was basically cut off. No more sediments was transported down to this system by, by the little drift. And instead, this system evolved up here. Uh, and we, we have calculated that, that what we call the, the sea level threshold rate for barrier stability that dropped from around 2 to 9 millimeters per year to above uh, below 1 millimeter per year. And that's actually less than the sea level rise. And that of course means that you'll have a system that starts to go. So this is the final slide before the, the conclusion, just to give you an idea about the pattern geography. So before 3,500, you have, a, I guess, relatively well-developed barrier system. But in a period where you have really a, a very large decrease in the sediment supply to this system, you see a, large scale erosion of the system from both sides actually, from both the, the seaboard side and the landward side of these barriers. And after 2,000 years ago again, the system is static. And why it did that, we don't know exactly. We don't know why do we suddenly have an increase in the sediment supply again. Yeah? But it could have something to do with the cultural trend of the reef. This, this is just a hypothesis. We actually are not quite sure about that. So just to conclude, so we uh, I think the take home message is here in the, in the last point, and uh, maybe in the two last points, that we really should consider sediment supply when we evaluate the, 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 how these systems have responded to, uh, to, yeah, to changes uh, in the environment. So, sediment supply is often maybe a more important control than, than sea level change. It could be here. Um, and for the future, when we talk about uh, how our system will respond to future sea level changes, better sea level rise, we need to consider if there is any natural or maybe human induced changes in the sediment supply that could just as well be impacting these systems. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lucia. That was a very interesting. I think this is a scale that's 
large scale with the physical stimulation is. A time for uh, one short question. Julie? Thanks for my nice presentation. I had a question uh, looking at those beautiful GDR lines that you, that you showed. Some of them you, you, you see well, much much below the normal water table, which should be the salt intrusion. How, how do you do it? We don't, there's a fresh water links on these islands. So Down to the bottom, yeah. so minus 10 meters below, below in, in yeah, the sediment. We, 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 in some places we see the the salt water coming in, especially when we have closest to the coast, that's that's a common issue we have. That as soon as we have limes close to the coast, but uh, we have the salt water. Otherwise, it's, uh, we, we don't have this this issue. So we have a really uh, high quality uh, GBR record from from, this, uh, from these systems. <coughs> The coffee breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I will ask two or three questions. So, so next talk, please by Shan.